Hi again, this is Mother Mantis. Thanks for stopping by. So the release of Mass Effect Legendary Edition is just around the corner now. Today I'm going to talk to you about how to get the best ending for your Mass Effect playthrough, including what companions to take on what missions and in what order to ensure the right outcome. There are eight major decisions plus a few smaller choices that you'll want to get just right in order to ensure that you survive the series finale. So the Legendary Edition will include all three games and their DLC. That's a lot of content. If you played the games and the DLC as they came out back in the day, you'll remember that playing the DLC after the main game turned out to be kind of a big mistake because it forced you into certain story errors that really affected later circumstances with no way to fix them because the DLC came out after the main game. So in order to get the story outcome you wanted or to get a more cohesive story, you had to replay the whole series with the DLC in the right places of the game and you had to do a lot of Googling to figure out what DLC to play and when. So getting the trilogy with the DLC in one package is really a major benefit. You can easily play the games with all of their respective DLC in the perfect order. My own daughter has never played this game. <laughs> and obviously I can't tell you about particular story decisions without also giving you major spoilers. So consider this right here, right here, your official spoiler warning, right here. <music> Do you spare the Rachni Queen or do you kill her? The Rachni attacked the other galaxy races hundreds of years ago and they're now almost extinct. So freeing the Rachni Queen is risky given their history, but you do want to spare her. If you don't, you're going to encounter another version of her later in the series and that version will make promises to assist you, but will abandon this fleet when the chips are down. During the Vermeyer mission, things will get a little testy between Shepard and Rex, and it's possible for this to end in violence, where Shepard ends up killing Rex. You can make things still work out later with his successor Reeve, but if possible, Rex should survive Vermeyer. He contributes more assets to the main conflict than his successor Reeve would, and he's also just a great character. There are actually several ways this encounter can play out, depending on whether you've recruited Garrus or Liara by this point. But the easiest thing to do is one, do Reeve's loyalty mission before Vermeyer, or two, have enough Paragon or Renegade points to interrupt him at the crucial moment. If you save him, another popular character will die later in the series. But in terms of story narratives, it's still better to save Rex. I'll explain why when I get to that other character. <music> At the end of the first Mass Effect, you have one final major decision, whether to call in the human fleets to save the Council or leave the Council to die and not lose any of your human fleet. But it's better to save them. Yes, human ships are destroyed, but the Council will be grateful, and that shows up later in the series. In Mass Effect 2, there are really only two kinds of main story missions, recruitment and loyalty. Recruitment missions are pretty straightforward, but things do get a little bit dicey with the loyalty missions, and it all comes down to how many Paragon and Renegade points you have. So make sure one or the other is in good shape before you take on any of the loyalty missions, especially those for, for instance, Zaid, Miranda, Tally, and Jack. With Jack and Miranda in particular, unless you have a high enough Paragon or Renegade level, one of them will not be loyal to you, and you want them both loyal. Finally, be sure to finish up all the loyalty missions before doing the big mission with the Reaper because end game events begin at that point. If you didn't do all your loyalty missions, you'll be out of luck. During Morden's loyalty mission, Shepard and Morden will hunt down Morden's old protege, Malon. When you find him, it's pretty clear he's been doing awful experiments to produce the data that will cure the genophage. And you need to decide whether to destroy the data that was produced from suffering and death or save it. This is one of the main decisions that has consequences later in the series. So for the best outcome, you need to choose to save the data. <music> In the final mission, you have a series of choices, each of which can majorly affect who lives and dies at the end of the game. So, number one, make sure that the Normandy is fully upgraded, both defenses and weapons, before you go to the end game. Number two, you have to decide who's going to lead the first fire team and who's going to enter the vents. Legion, Tally, or Kasumi should enter the vents. 
and Miranda, Jacob, or Garris should lead the other fire team. Never assign one of these duties to a team member if you haven't done their loyalty mission. Number three, the team member that will serve as shield should be either Samara or Jack because biotics. For the second fire team, once again, the choice comes down to Garris, Miranda, or Jacob. Number five, for escorting the survivors of the Normandy, use Morden. And lastly, number six, for who to take with you to the heart of the collector base, the main thing to remember is that taking more than one tanky type will spell disaster for the other teams. So pick one tank, that would be Zaid, Grunt, or Garrus, and then Tally, Jack, Miranda, or Thane, Kasumi, or Samara. Whichever one you haven't assigned to another duty can also go with you. One of the first things you'll do in Mass Effect 3 is enlist the help of the Krogan, and you'll be dealing with Rex, who is now Chief, so saving him back in Mass Effect 1 made a difference here. Rex is a more level-headed and mature leader who can keep the Krogan in hand, whereas if you had let him die, his successor is a lot more hot-headed and harder to work with. Rex wants a cure for the genophage using the data that you saved in Mass Effect 2. The Salarian Dalatras will try to get you to betray Rex behind his back, but don't do it. The downside here is that Morden will die curing the genophage, which I referred to earlier when I was talking about saving Rex. And that does suck, but it's a better story outcome because Morden created the genophage in the first place. And now, as an old man, this gives him the chance that he wants to make it right. The conflict between the Quarians and the Geth will reach a boiling point and you'll have to step in to ensure the best outcome. One, make sure your Paragon or Renegade is maxed out and save Admiral Zalkoris. You can then use your Paragon and Renegade to persuade or intimidate to mediate a peace between the Quarians and the Geth without losing tally. Legion will be reassimilated back into the Geth consciousness, but the alternative will be you'll lose tally and she dies. So the best outcome here is to be able to make peace between them. And finally, the final choice. When you get to the Crucible, you have to make one last choice. Decide the fate of the Reapers and by extension, the rest of the galaxy. From a story arc standpoint, one of the other endings might have more integrity, but at the beginning of this video, I said I was defining best outcome as meaning the one where Shepard survives. So in that case, choose the destroy option. You won't definitively know what happens later, but you'll get a pretty good indicator that Shepard is still alive after the final big scene. All right, so I believe that is everything you need to do to ensure that your Shepard survives the final confrontation. I'll be back in a few days with another video, probably on something different than Mass Effect. Have a great day. Thanks a lot.